Hey everybody, we've got an Optima HD142X to look at today. This was sent in by a customer from my day job. Um, I believe they said that it would flash colors and shut down. I think it's going to be a color wheel. There's the uh, data plate. They did just put a new lamp assembly in and um, it was acting up beforehand. They figured the lamp would fix it. It did not. So they wanted me to take a look. I suspect it's going to need a cleaning. So we're going to fire it up first here and just verify the issue. And I checked the lamp assembly first, made sure it was plugged in and all that fun stuff. So let's see. I heard the wheel spin up. I have Optima coming up on the uh, wall there. Let's see, let's focus a little. There we go. So let's get the test pattern up. Yeah, that really doesn't look that bad. Seems like it's working, you know, as expected. But, oh, here we are, fan lock. We have a fan lock warning. Maybe that's what he was talking about. He said that it would flicker and shut down, but I wonder if the flickering was that coming up. I don't know. Let's start this video over, because I'm dead wrong. Hey, everybody. Today we have uh, an Optima HD142X to look at. It has a fan lock warning. The projector will turn on. It'll run for a minute or so. And then it throws a fan lock error on the screen. Projector shuts down and we get this. If you have an Optima and you start it up and you get a message on the screen about fan lock and then it shuts down and you have those flashing LEDs there's a fan problem. So I'm going to unplug it and we're going to disassemble this projector and see which of the fans is the issue. So we'll start by taking the lamp door off and taking out the uh, lamp assembly. This is a SP8V01HC01 I think if I remember correctly. I'll have a link for this in the description if you need one. And this particular assembly does have a, uh, a proper coating on the lens. You can kind of see it there. I will set that out of the way. Set this out of the way. Let's see. Yeah, it's dusty. Oh. Somebody tried to get in there. Are we missing a screw here? No screw. No screw. No screw. No screw. No screw. And this was the screw they didn't take out. Where did they break it? This is spinning really weird. Hear that? Did they break that center. Yeah. There we go. We got that a little loose. There's no screw in there. There's no screw in there. Okay, so it looks like they started taking it apart. Yep. Oh, man. So they literally broke that center tab out, this piece. That's why I could feel it spinning this right here and that's unplugged oh what the heck did they do here uh, so the fan lock error looks to be because the uh, fan is actually unplugged and there we go and then there's the broken piece from the top I'll get that back on when we put it back together. Uh, 
let's look at what else we have going on in here. So that fan, so that's the only fan. This is a single fan projector, and the fan was unplugged. So let's put the lamp assembly back in. Why on earth would they have disconnected the fan like that? I think this was a test to see if I was going to tell them if something crazy is wrong with it or what. Alright, let me get something to hold that switch down. I found that balloon clips work really well for holding these switches down. They don't put too much stress on it. They're not super tight, but they're tight enough. You can see it stays in position pretty well. So let me plug it in and we'll see what happens. Alright, lamp came on. Come on, fan. There's the fan. Picture came up. Let's see, menu. Test pattern. Off, grid, purple, white. There's the test pattern. Bump the camera. There's the test pattern. It looks okay. I mean, this thing does need a cleaning. I can see that fan's all full of dust. You can see all that dust down in there around the side of the fan. That all needs to be cleaned out. Because that fan does all the cooling. It's forcing the air. It's going through into the lamp. And then keeping that cool. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this run with the uh, test pattern up for a bit. And then um, if it runs for about a half hour or so, just like this, we'll shut it down. We'll clean that dust out. You know, get it as clean as it needs to be, and then um, I'll set the cover back on and we'll run it again with the cover on and see how it does. Um, but depending where he got this from, you know, maybe he bought it that way with that cable out. I, I can't figure out why the, why the uh, fan was unplugged, but that seems to be the only real issue. So, anyway, check back with you guys in a bit. So let's get these screws out because we're going to lift the lamp basket out. See, somebody else was in here. See, that tape's missing. The color wheel is... What the heck they're doing? Is that running the right way? Everything about this is just weird. All right, anyway, let's unfold that. Let's unplug this. I'm hoping it's just the fan, the uh, crud on the fan. When there's dirt on the edge like that, it messes up the airfoil shape, and that can be a problem. So I think that's what we'll try first. Let's take the connector, and I'll leave that there, take the connector out. And we're going to give this a thorough cleaning, deep cleaning. Mm. Come on. Let's just take the wire out that way because the uh, I don't want to. Well, I'll show you guys. Let me just get this wire out and I'll show you what I'm talking about. There we go. What the hell? It's just out.
There we go. So the connector could come out, but I'd have to remove that foil tape on the bottom. And while removing the foil tape isn't a big deal, putting it back kind of is. That's not going to really be an option. It'll never, like I'd have to replace it. I'd have to find new foil tape to put there. And sure, I can get some, but if all I have to do is unplug this wire, then we'll just do that. So we're going to go through and see if we can clean this up. I see there's all kinds of black crud. I don't know where that's coming from. Some rust on the back of that screw there where it got really hot. Yeah, and then on the edge of the fan blades, that's really where I think the issue is. So I think that's what we'll clean up. Alright, so I'm going to hold, hold the fan still. Watch. See that? Yeah, let's, let's actually remove the fan. It might even be new fan time. Although I do wonder why he had all the screws out. Why the fan was unplugged. Man, so many questions about this projector. It's just... The stories that devices could tell, I'm sure. even see the crud knocking off onto the bench. Yeah. Yeah, see? I think this fan might actually be shot. I think we'll do a cleaning first. Let's see, does that come apart? That's not, nope, that's not a cap. See if the blades, nope, see a lot of times you can push those out. Maybe this is used, but was working when it was removed. Uh, we'll still clean this. First thing I'm doing is knocking all the uh, loose crud off. Then I'll see about wiping this all down with some rubbing alcohol. Let's get some rubbing alcohol. All right, this is, it's 
pretty clean. Let's get a paper towel. All right, so first things first, let's get the uh, lamp wire fed back in. in so the lamp wire is ready now the door wire because the door switch is going to have to wrap around there so that is going to go in here I can see the connector we'll see if we can just kind of thread it on down in there speaker and I am not going to put those screws in yet because the uh, lamp will hold everything down so we'll set that in and tighten I'll snug this down I'm not going to tighten it plug in Mr. Connector it's down Just weird. I don't remember the color wheel wire being this short. Just seems weird. I don't know. I guess it's okay. Let's put that under here. We'll check this if it acts weird at all. There we go. All right, and then where's my, there it is. Let's clip this on. And some power. So far it's starting okay. Fan? Fan's on. Alright. The fact that we never saw the lamp light means that we had to have had a fan issue. So let's see. Let's see what that fan's doing. Alright. So we've got a ground. And let's see what we got here. That is probably the power to the fan. This is probably RPMs. 
Yeah, 1.68. Then what ground? Yeah. Alright, so looks yeah, normalish. Let's put the put my pocket scope on it and see if it's doing uh, what sort of RPMs it's reporting. I love this little scope. I mean, it's a cheapie, it's not really 100 megahertz. I think it actually will do 100 megahertz, but just barely and not reliably, so, you know. Alright. But for like 20 to 40 megahertz, it seems to work really well. So for fans, it's fine. So let's see, let's go to milliseconds. And let's go to 1 volt. Seems pretty stable. 83 hertz. I think what we should probably do is put the uh, cover back on and hook a movie up to it and let it run. Because that that's about what I would want to see for most DLP fans is about 83 hertz, or at least for this you know blower fan there, about 83 hertz on the pulses and about 1.7 volt peak to peak you know at the 500 millivolt scale hmm color wheel starting to get buzzy though did I do that? no I did not do that, did I? Huh. This is awfully hot. Hmm. All right, it's nice and cool. I'll let it sit for, I don't know, an hour. So I went to check the color wheel sensor and it got angry. Hmm. And now it's thrown temp error, which doesn't make sense. And I knew it didn't short anything for sure. I just went to touch that and then it cut out. Let's check some things with the uh, with the ohm meter. See if we have anything weird between ground. Let's find ground first. I'm pretty sure that's the white wire here. Yeah. All right. So this I'm pretty sure is sense. 100k, 110k. So I'm going through. There's a capacitor involved. K. Let's see, and what are we on here? DC. Let's do AC coupling on that. Maybe that's part of the issue. We'll actually check it with the multimeter. So this seems like it's the 
LED in. Hmm, that is weird. I have never seen the color wheel sensor cause a projector to act up like that. I wonder if Optima is doing something non-standard, which wouldn't entirely surprise me. Let's see, so got an AC coupling, two milliseconds, one volt. That's weird. There it goes. Got to have a bad capacitor in there somewhere. Because it's making that lose its mind. Unless it's the uh, sensor. Let's... Hmm. Hmm. Let's actually pop that sensor board out and just kind of give it a, a look-see. I've never heard of uh, a color wheel sensor doing that, shutting down like that. Oh, wow. I wonder what that crud is. I wonder if it's conductive. Let's see something. Let's get the meter. Let's go to ohms. And then I'm just going to touch, let's see, let's touch the dirt. We get any nah, doesn't seem like it. All right, let's clean that sensor off. I wonder if that's the issue. I mean, that's really bad. because there are capacitors on here and I wonder if that crud was changing the value of the capacitors. Get a, another swab and hit that with alcohol and we'll pop it back in and see what happens. Okay, I think that'll work. Let's check the color wheel and make sure it has its index mark. There it is. Looks good. Okay, let's put this back on and hopefully the uh, Hopefully it works fine after that. There it is. I clean the dirt off that too. This is a good thing to check if you're having weird symptoms. Make sure that that sensor is clean.
by. All right, let's see if let's see if we still have that jittering. Nope, no jittering. So 1.14, that's the actual power to the LED. And that's the PWM coming back. If we go to Hertz. See if that'll work. Something tells me I'm gonna have to go to AC. Oh no! There we are, 120. That's what we should get. Much better. Much, much better. None of that chirping. In fact, let's uh, let's see if the scope is happy. I'll bet that crud on the sensor was the uh, root cause of things. Well, and the fan, everything was dirty. So let's see, one volt, two milliseconds. Yeah, see, 120 hertz, that's what we want. No flickering or jittering, so I guarantee you We'll probably, well, shouldn't say it yet. I am almost ready to guarantee it. Need to run it for a little bit. And then once it runs and everything's happy, then um, then I can guarantee it, you know, because it's a repair, so it needs a, a warranty. So anyway, I'm just going to slide this out of the way and slide this on over. And we're going to look at this guy. This was broken off didn't take the uh, center screw out I guess and they just pulled and pulled until it ripped off so got a couple options we can CA glue it which is kind of in the front running at the moment um, or try some C epoxy got some of this stuff I haven't tried it yet I'm thinking about it so I don't know I think we'll try the CA glue first because I have that uh, yeah, I have the activator so I think we'll do that first let's prep this area the uh, projector is kind of buzzing so I'm kind of wondering if maybe there's a uh, still a problem with the color wheel the color wheel might need replacement but we're gonna let it run until it shuts down on its own, you know, until it errors, and then uh, then we'll see about the color wheel. Just wanted to get some rubbing alcohol on this to clean it off. I didn't mean to get fuzzies on it. Yeah. All right. So let's do the uh, activator first. I believe this stuff is hexane. I think that's what they use. There we go. All right. Yeah. 
Hmm. See, I think that's just going to snap right off again. Yeah. I think we're going to end up epoxying it. I'll try it one more time. I suspect this is going to need epoxy. Or JB Weld or, you know, something more than just CA glue. It is a pretty, um, there's a lot of stress on this point. You know, granted it's split between the other ones, but oof, look at that. He must have uh, cleaned it a bit before I got it because I'm seeing like bits where there was a lot of dust. And then there wasn't, so I'll bet you he cleaned it out. Bad. Well, it's actually not feeling terrible. Hmm. All right, we're going to let that sit. All right, so I tested the hell out of this. I actually ran it for about five hours, and it was fine. No issues. It's ready to go back together. Um, but I just want to check some of that stuff that the, uh, that the owner damaged when he had it apart. I went through my screw collection, and I definitely have some, uh, some spare helical threads, so I'm sure we can replace them. I just wanted to deal with the uh, tape, you know, all this stuff that's got to go back. In here we need a piece of tape here. Let me zoom you guys in. So this is where we're gonna do a piece of tape and then I'll put another oh, pardon me, put a fresh piece of tape over top. So let's get the uh, transformer tape. Hold that down. There we go. That goes there. That's all taped down. That wire's in place. Let's retie this stuff back into here. Right in this back corner. All right. I'm fine with that. And I glued that back on. It's happy, so this can go back on with that screw tower. All right, so the only thing I probably should do is see if this needs a, any more of a cleaning. It actually looks pretty good. Uh, the tape didn't get down all the way. Get in there. I didn't see any spots when I looked at it, so I think we're good in here. I didn't have any of that open anyway. So let's let's put the top back on. What we'll do is we'll set the zoom thing to the middle, make sure that's in the middle, and that'll make this going back on a lot easier. All 
right. Let's put the one original screw back in. Oh, shit. Oop, forgot something very important. I just realized <laughs> I didn't put the uh, screws back into the uh, lamp basket yet. In my excitement, almost forgot. Do this tape, all the tape on this color wheel. In fact, can I? Let's do this. Let's put that index wire over the color wheel wire. That'll help push it down out of the way. There we go. Alright, I'm happy with that. Let's put this upper cover back on and get some screws in. Much better. put the screw that they forgot to take out. Let's put that in first. That's good.
All right, so all those screws are back in. Uh, I imagine the uh, owner probably still has the ones that he took out at home, but now he can just, I don't know, save them, throw them out, whatever. Let's put the uh, lamp door back on. There we go. And I just want to wipe this off. All right. Much better. Much, much better. Yeah, see there was just like, I don't know, just sitting up on the ceiling. They'll get dirty. Dirt just lands on them or on the table, you know, wherever you have it. I don't care how clean your house is, how good of an air filter you have, all that stuff. Dust is insidious. It will get wherever it wants to go. Oh, we got something rattling. Some FOD. Some FOD. Let's see what kind of FOD we have. Get it out. We got a chunk of plastic. Oh, it looks like a clip from the top. Not going to worry about it. With the condition this thing was in when it came in, this is this is amazing. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, if you take your uh, Optima apart, make sure you take out the screw that's behind the warranty sticker. There's six screws. One, two, three, four, five, six. All those have to come out. So this is good. Um, I'm going to go set it up and run it again, and then the fellow can pick it up tomorrow. So, all right, we got it set up over here. I have it coming on now. Let's see what the picture looks like. All right, so the picture's not bad. I mean, the picture's good, but I noticed something. Maybe you guys can see it. See that little uh, that white spot? There's a hair in there. There's a couple, actually. Where else? There we are. See? See right? there not that that oops that and that that needs to be cleaned so that means I do need to open it back up uh, which is fine because we good to see how my screws worked out and uh, after we get it apart we can get in there and clean that optic unit and uh, this will be good to go so let's go uh, pop it open and get it clean. All right, so we need to clean that optical assembly and I'm debating the best way to show you. There's a couple options. You can take the optic assembly out. That's kind of the uh, last stitch option. I think what we're gonna go for here is try to get in through that little door down there. So to make it, to try that, let's unplug the color wheel, the color wheel sensor, move those out of the way. I'm going to try and leave that stuff plugged in for now. Make sure that's not going to be a problem. And then get these wires loose. So we're going to take the uh, screws out of the main board. Hopefully, we can get all the crud out in there. I don't want to have to take the optic assembly out. And for people who own one of these, it'll make it easier if they don't have to as well. So we'll unplug. There we go. Is that going to... No. Oh. So we got to get these two screws out of the HDMI. Got to really, uh, really noticed that these projectors are just very simplified. 
it used to be way more complex. Oh, actually I see something else. I'm going to unplug this so I can show you guys up close. Look at that USB port. So that's probably the level of dust this thing had in it before it got to me. Just looking at some of the remnants. Let's see, then the screw. Oops, got to actually get in there. Alright. There we go. And then this one. So this standoff also holds the uh, main board. So that comes out and the screw comes out and then come on. Here we are. That comes out. Actually just set the main board in there to protect it. And you know what? I think we're going to go in here, clean this power supply out. Come on. There we go. Yeah, it's actually not too bad. Although, look at the... Uh, look at this connector. Where's it? Oh, there we go. Look at that connector. That's the uh, ballast signal wire. Look at all that crud on it. We'll clean that. So now we, we could take the uh, optical assembly out, but we're going to try and clean it through here. This thing really smells like end dust. It's gross. So let's, anyway, let's. Uh, Let's get that little door off. It's just one screw. Gonna leave it on the screwdriver because it's gonna go right back on as soon as this is clean. Come on. Come on, little door. Let's move. There we go. It's actually two pieces. See? And that'll just sit down. But in there is where we want to clean. So let me get my flashlight. Let's see if you guys can get a better view. Maybe you'll be able to see the DMD. You can kind of see it in there. Yeah, you can see it behind that little bracket on the top, that mask. And I can see plenty of uh, crud. Let's see, so I'm going to get the puffer. Flashlight in through the front. Let's see if you guys can see. See that's that's the DMD. So this thing just tried to attack me. It uh give you an idea how big it is. It's my index finger right next to it. But I got it, so I'm safe. Back to the projector. I think that'll do it. It really doesn't take much to get in there. With the little spots we saw, it wasn't super bad. It just had like a little bit of crud in there. So I think that'll do it. If it was really bad, we could um, take this all out, take the back off, clean the surface of the DMD. But I don't think that's necessary here. I think that will do just fine. So now, Let's reinstall this bracket. Let's 
reinstall that metal. Now let's get the button this back up first. good. Make sure nothing's going to fall inside the fan. And we can put this back in. You guys see? There we go. in. Now we can put our screw and then we'll put the standoff. So the screw goes here. And then the standoff goes here. And I think let me grab a nut driver for that. Nut driver just makes it easier to get it snug. Because I want it to be snug for the um, mainboard screw that's going to go in next after we put the mainboard back in. So there's the mainboard, and you can see all that crud in there. Let's see if it'll, if I can pull it out, or if, see if it'll come out as a chunk. That's always satisfying. Not really. I think we'll just I'm gonna go hit this with the uh, with the air real quick. One moment. Look at that. Oops, I got that one and those clean too. So now I have an idea of what this probably looked like before it came into me. And that kind of matches what I was expecting I would see. And then it turns out that the uh, fella half cleaned it, or got the majority of the dirt out, just didn't know about the color wheel, I guess, or the color wheel sensor. There we go, that's down. Let's put those back in. Nah, I'm going to do these by hand. What we'll do is we'll fire it up with the top off just to make sure that we're uh, happy with the cleanliness of the optics. I feel that we should be fine, but this will tell us for sure. There we go. assembly. There we are. That's locked. That's down. Fan is not hitting anything. We'll retape it once we test it. Then let's put the uh, clip on. Holds that. Can I still turn? Nope. Let's do 
just want to put this on so that it's not in the way but still holds the switch. There we go. I want to be able to adjust the focus. All right, slide that over. Let's get some power. All right, we have standby, as you guys can see, and power. All right, just fired up. You can see that Optima there. What we're going to do is once that gets up to full brightness, I'll uh, kill the lights and then see if we can focus in on any dust. All right, so there's a ton of light bleed, so don't worry about that. But I think, I think we're good. I am projecting on a piece of crooked cardboard. It's kind of warped, but it's white. Let's see, yeah, I don't see anything, oops, yeah, I like that, see I should be able to, if there's any dust, I should be able to focus on it near the edge of the focus travel, either one way or the other, depending on where the dust is. So let's turn it off and then uh, let's put the cover on and try to run the you know the long throw area. All right, let's tape this down. go that's taped down and then this has to be taped in I don't recall if this model has the color wheel wire going through here too like many of them do but since it's routed that way we're gonna leave it that way it's not my job to re-engineer these. They designed it this way for a reason, so we're going to follow that. Come on. There we go. Just want to make sure that wasn't going to get in the way of the uh, lamp screw, and it won't. All right, so they're taped. Let's give the fan a little spin. Nothing's rubbing. That's good. So let's put the uh, cover on. And by cover, I mean the uh, two HDMI screws. Let's do those first, and then we'll do the upper cover. And it's been a few days. I'm glad I uh, decided to glue that piece. Psst. That's a shame. I was kind of worried about that. But that means that I just need to use a uh, different type of glue. Let's see what we have around. All right, I'm going to go with the uh, gap filler. I think the other stuff was just too thin. Let me just clean this up a little. All right, that'll work. Just wanted to scuff this a little. This is the thicker stuff. I used the uh, Loctite, what was it? Loctite uh, plastic bonder. I'm not sure what number that is. But I'm going to use this stuff this time. Let's just get it lined up with its marks. Like that. And I just have to hold it until it sets. After hemming and hauling, I've decided 
we're going to put some epoxy. Okay, so the uh, resin and hardener are ready to go. We just have to mix it. Just dropped all my cutting swabs. All right, so let's see. Resin, it's a one to one mix. Make sure there's no crud in there. All right, so one to one mix. We don't need much. So I'm going to fill that square. And then I'm going to put some, put equal amount. Let's see, hardener. Another drop. There we go. That looks pretty equal. Equal enough. And so they say I have about a minute of mixing. What was it again? Yep, mix them for a minute, and then I have about five minutes. I probably should have put them next to each other instead of catty corner like that. But that's alright. We only need enough to put around that thing. Oh, there we go. It's starting to warm up. Reactions happening. Science. Yeah, I, I mixed up way more than I need. Just get some inside, and then around. seem to recall this thread being a little worn so I'm just going to put a little bit in there and then jam it on down and then clear the top off there we go otherwise I think that will do it a little bit going up the side I'm just kind of dragging it up the side to help bond it. And then inside looks good. All right. So that's going to take about five minutes to set up. We'll let that go and I'll be back. Here we go. That's all set up and starting to harden. In about an hour that should be ready to go. I'm just going to uh, hold off on putting that screw in until everything's in. So let's mount this. All right. So I'm going to make sure the zoom nub is pointing up straight up and then we'll set the zoom adjuster to the middle. And that should line up with it. Yeah, it did. I felt it drop right on. Yep. Nice. All right. Let's uh, put some screws in.
And this is the one that was uh, giving me a hard time. So it's the one I put the extra epoxy in to help lock those threads up. Oh, perfect. That got tight. Not even just snug, it got tight. So that worked out. It's been about almost an hour. Enough for this to be set up enough to put the screw in. Alright, there we go. Last screws in. And last but not least, lamp door. Just like that. Snug this down. Not tight, just until it stops. Like that. Perfect. Alright, let's go test it. All right, of course, everything's upside down because, you know, it's a ceiling mount projector. Um, but you get the idea. And if you have any questions about your Optima projector, go ahead and stick them down in the comments. Um, if you need a lamp for one of these, go ahead, and I'm going to leave a link down in the description with a coupon code. Um, good lamps, nice quality, built the way you need them to be built. Use the coupon code if you buy one. Thank you for watching.